Hi there, and welcome to The History Teacher. This revision video covers early Elizabethan England, 1558 to 1588, of the GCSE Edexcel History 9 to 1 course. Hopefully, you'll also find it useful though, even if you're studying any of the other exam boards, or even if, like me, you just love history. Hi there guys, in this video we're going to have a look at the causes, consequences and events of the revolt of the Northern Earls, which took place in 1569 to 1570. We need to start by introducing the main players in this event. Here's Thomas Percy, he is the Earl of Northumberland, he's a major Catholic landowner, and his wife Anne Percy. Additionally we've got Charles Neville, who is the Earl of Westmoreland, he's another major Catholic landowner, and his wife is Jane Neville who also happens to be previously called Jane Howard. She is the sister of Thomas Howard, who is the Duke of Norfolk. He's a senior nobleman, a Protestant, but his family have a history of being Catholic. He's got very close ties with other Catholic families. What you need to know about these families is that they are really ancient family. They've been lords and earls for hundreds of years. The Percy family and the Howard family have always been major players in government and in fact Charles Neville's ancestor was married to Richard III. So these people are used to being at the very top of the country. Of course the other key player in this story is Mary Queen of Scots. If you're not sure about who she is or why she matters check out my previous video about her. So why do they want to revolt? Well the key reason of course is that they are Catholic. They wanted to return England to Catholicism. They were over the moon when Mary Tudor becomes Queen in 1553 and looking forward to England being a Catholic country again. Of course that doesn't last and in 1558 Elizabeth becomes queen and they see very quickly that their influence and power starts to disappear. Elizabeth brings in her own people to support her in government. For example, William Cecil we know about, John Forster and Robert Dudley are not considered to be nobles by the old families and they see themselves as being displaced and losing their jobs to these people. With that comes a loss of wealth. Westmoreland by the time of the revolt of the Northern Earls is bankrupt and is having to take out loans to support himself. Northumberland is not quite so bad but he has lost a lot of income due to the loss of his positions because these positions come with the right to tax people. Adding insult to injury, in 1561 Elizabeth names James Pilkington the Bishop of Durham. This guy, his job is to stamp out Catholicism and he uses some pretty harsh methods to do so. The Northern Earls really resent his interference in the North. They don't see him as one of their men and they see the North very much as under their influence. The other big problem, of course, is the uncertainty. Elizabeth is refusing to get married, she's refusing to have children, and she has even refused to name an heir. You will know, if she dies without an heir, this is going to lead to potentially civil war. And a civil war could potentially lead to loss of power and wealth for the Northern Earls, particularly if another Protestant monarch takes over. In 1569, they come up with this plan. And the plan is that the Duke of Norfolk is going to marry Mary, Queen of Scots, with the support from Spain. The idea is that Mary, Queen of Scots, will depose Elizabeth and become Queen, and the Duke of Norfolk will become her consort. Mary is so convinced that this plan is going to work that she tells the Spanish ambassador in 1569, I shall be Queen of England in three months. Mass will be said all over the country, which clearly tells us that she is planning to become Queen and convert the country back to Catholicism. However, Robert Dudley finds out about the plan and and reveals the plot to Elizabeth. Immediately, Norfolk is arrested. Despite this, Northumberland and Westmoreland, with the help of their wives, continue their planned revolt. They march to Durham Cathedral with all the people from their estate and celebrate the Catholic Mass. In response to this, Elizabeth moves Mary to Coventry to get her away, to remove her as a risk in this situation. The rebels do capture Hartlepool. However, since no Spanish support arrives, the plot ultimately fails. Westmoreland escapes to Europe where he dies in poverty, having lost all his lands and estates anyway. Northumberland similarly escapes to Scotland, where he is captured by the Scots and returns to England and is executed in 1572. Howard is originally arrested, but is then pardoned and released. He's then later on executed for his part in the Rodolfi plot, which we will look at in my next video. So why does this plot fail so spectacularly? Well, promised support from Spain never arrives, and probably more importantly, not all of the 
the northern landowners support the plot. Notably, Lancashire and Cheshire remain loyal to the Queen. You've got to remember that this is a country where religious upheaval and religious turmoil has just gone on for decades. And many of the landowners will be thinking that they want to see a bit of stability. She's been Queen for 10 years now and they're hoping that Elizabeth, who is still quite young and healthy, is going to create that stability in the country. There are other landowners who are worried about losing the wealth that they gained in the dissolution of the monasteries under Henry VIII. Ultimately, if a Catholic monarch comes to the throne, there is a possibility that they might take all the land and hand it back to the monasteries, in which case they lose all their money. Similarly, if a Protestant is the next in line to the throne, then they might take a very dim view of Catholics who tried to overthrow Elizabeth and therefore still might lose all their money. So for their point of view, the best bet is to stay out of it altogether. Ultimately, this plot is a bit of a non-event. Nothing happens, but it is significant for a number of reasons, both for historians and for Elizabeth herself. In the first part, it shows Mary, Queen of Scots, can't be trusted. And Elizabeth responds to this by moving Mary to Coventry and keeping a closer guard on her. It also shows that the loyalty of English Catholics is somewhat in doubt. And so she begins to take steps to close in on English Catholics. You remember that under the religious settlement she kind of turns a blind eye to Catholics who don't attend church but after the revolt of the Northern Earls she begins to close in on Catholics and begins to have more control over them. Additionally Elizabeth strengthens her control over the North. She executes 700 of the rebels who stood up against her and sends a very clear message that this is what happens when you mess with Elizabeth. Most importantly of all this is the moment at which the Pope excommunicates Elizabeth. He damns her to hell forever in 1570. This is really important because this is the moment at which the Pope is sending a clear message to English Catholics telling them that it is desirable to overthrow Elizabeth. You will be doing the world a favour if you do so. And of course English Catholics do respond. The next 15 years or so is filled with Catholic plants trying to overthrow Elizabeth and generally speaking replace her with Mary Queen of Scots. Okay I hope that clears everything up for you and I look forward to seeing you next time.